It's the end of the day with Ray. Hello, my friends. Well, folks, today we're going to jump in that gigantic Sharp Interactive board. I'm going to share the results of the Kanata's 40th survey, but I'm going to share them in a different way. And I got to do a shout out to the Kanata team. I mean, they sent out this 40th survey. And they built these beautiful pie charts. And I looked at those pie charts and said, holy crap, there's a whole lot more to that story. And I dug into the ingredients of the pie chart. And folks, what I found out was that this Kanata 40th survey has basically validated all of my warnings. All of my warnings about our industry diversifying into IT services. They're your numbers. You provided them to the Kanata report. I just dissected them at a whole nother level. And where do you see what these numbers share? They literally validate all of my warnings that you have consultants out there teaching you all how to build lifestyle IT companies. Congratulations, the consultants won because most of you all built a lifestyle IT company that's pretty much worthless <laughs> in the big scheme of things. And, and folks, when I'm going through the survey and I start out with how they describe it, and I think there's some, there's some rooted issues that I want to share, and that's why you see this root-bound tree up here, but let me just read this to you. 40th Annual Dealer Survey. Still rooted in A3 and A4 printer and MFP sales and service. Dealers share who and what they value the most when it comes to their manufacturing partners. Our industry is so rooted in a print mindset. It is completely rooted in this mindset. And, and you know, ladies and gentlemen, I had this ficus tree growing on my patio. I love the ficus tree. And the pot it was in was beautiful. I mean, it's like a handmade pot. It was just beautiful pot. And I said, shit, I got to get that ficus tree out of that pot because it's root bound. I couldn't get it out of the pot. So what I had to do is I had to get a big old hammer, smash the crap out of the pot. The pot ended up in the trash. And I was able to take that ficus root and put it in a whole new environment and allow it to grow even more. And I think that's what our industry needs to do. We got to get the hammer out, smash the crap out of the pot. And we need a new environment. And we can't be so root bounded in a print mentality that it stifles our aspirations around diversification. Because this survey, ladies and gentlemen, is horrifying. I mean, this could have been my damn Halloween special. It's so damn scary. So without any further ado, let's jump on the board. I want to share these numbers with you. The first thing I want to do is show you this. So I see this advert for the ACDI Energy Services, that crazy you know, electrical vehicle charging station concept that was going to change our industry. And folks, I get it. You know, we're all looking for different things to do. But when this started five years ago, I made fun of it. I thought it was the stupidest crap I've ever heard. And I shared all my reasons why. I did multiple videos on that. But here we are, what, five years later, and we still have not substantiated publicly what the hell this even is. And I don't care about one or two dealers that maybe hit some home runs selling electric vehicle charge stations. I think when we come out with this kind of crap, we ought to tell the industry why it's not working. We ought to tell the industry the real damn details of it. We ought to tell the industry how many dealers have hundreds of these things in their warehouses. We need to share the realities. And we don't. We never want to share the math. We just want to share all the adjectives. Everything's going to be fantastic. We're hitting it out of the park. Our industry needs to demand more math. This proves that point. But in this survey, they got these great pie charts. I'll start out with this one. They're talking about the revenue of the 415 respondents. So 415 dealers gave the information. So this is pretty good information, 415 dealers. It says that 83 of them do revenues above 15 million and 332 do revenues underneath 15 million. And we know our industry. There's a lot of 15, 10 million dollar businesses out there. And I keep telling these folks, what do you want to do? Build an IT services company in your $15 million dealership that's lifestyle? Why do you want to do that? Don't you want to build a $15 million IT services business to go with your $15 million print business? And then maybe one day you could actually sell that $15 million IT services business for 10 times the amount of money you might sell whatever's left of the print business. Wouldn't that make more sense? I'd be screaming this stuff. And folks, and then I see this. Holy smokes. The math's mine. But I see this pie chart where they're telling you the revenue percentage of all the buckets. And the buckets that they got the revenue percentage on are this. Sales and service of A3 MF port, P's and printers, MPS, manage IT services, production print, document management, and voice over IP and UCAS. And folks, let me just start out at the bottom with this UCAS voice over IP. According to the Kanata survey, the information they got from the dealers that represents 1.3% of the revenue. So then what I did, I said, well, let's just pretend we're a $15 million dealer. 
And how much money would that be in all these different buckets? So for voice over IP, it would be $195,000 a year if you're a $15 million business. My question is why the hell even do it? I mean, why would you even be in that business for 1.3%? The next really low one is document management. Document management, 1.9%, a $15 million deal, that's 285000 a year. And I'm thinking, why the hell would you even be doing that? I've been a little critical of the document management business. I've asked a question a lot of times. There's literally 55,000 plus IT companies, okay, out here in the United States, right? I'm pretty sure that's probably the number still. And how many of those do document management? Ah, zero. You know why? Well, because they know that it's only 1.9% of the profession that actually does it well, which would be the document imaging channel. It only represents 1.9% of the revenue. Why the hell they want to do it? And my question is, of that 1.9%, how much do you really make? Are you just doing document management so you can sell some MFPs? So does that 285000 in revenue really become $300,000 in cost to get it out the door? I got to tell you, folks, we got to start looking at this low revenue producing parts of our buckets. Production print, 5.9%. So that $15 million dealer is doing $885,000 in production print. Are you kidding me with this? I've been very critical of production print. Some folks want every dealer in the world to sell it. Well, if you're a $15 million dealer and you're doing $885,000 in production print, that's not enough. How many machines is that? If you walked into those end users' office, how many TRM kits are you going to find on the floor that cost a thousand bucks a piece? How much toner is going to be on the shelf? How much time are your techs spending in front of that machine? Ladies and gentlemen, $885,000 a year to $15 million business for production print is horrible. And here's the one that really gets me. Managed IT services. Man, I, I got to thank the Kanata people for this report because you just validated everything I'm screaming about with this. 7.6% of the revenue, so a $15 million dealer is doing $1.4 million. $1.4 million in IT services. Congratulations, you just built a lifestyle IT services company inside your $15 million dealership that's completely worthless when you decide to sell, okay? Really, nobody's wanted to. MPS, $2 million, and of course the core deliverable of MFPs, A3 and A4, $9.9 million. I think today MSP is ridiculous. It's just part of what you do. It's your job, okay? Management services is not a diversification. It's your damn job. It's 2025. I said that back in 2023. And the reality of it is it's all the same. You're putting machines out there. You're supplying them and servicing them. They're on a contract. They pay cash. They do a lease. At the end of the day, it's all the service around print. It's all managed print services, isn't it? But folks, I wanted to get a little bit deeper into this. So then I decided, what if you're a $10 million dealer? What if you're a $5 million dealer? Let's just focus on the IT piece. If you're a $10 million dealer, that's 7.6%, that's $760,000 a year in IT services. Boy, you're knocking it out of the park with that number. If you're 5 million, it's only 380,000. Why is that so important? Why has that been part of my warnings over the last few years? Well, because ladies and gentlemen, what's the customer size? I mean, seriously, if you're a $10 million business, you're doing 7.6% of your revenue is coming from IT services, that's 760000 I mean, I, I've been screaming, you got to go upstream. You got to have high-end accounts. If those accounts are paying you $10,000 a month, that's only six customers. And I assure you, you got a lot more than six customers, don't you? What do you got, 150, 200 customers? Folks, we're selling stuff way too cheap. We're at the low end of the scale, and the numbers are absolutely proven it. If you're a $5 million dealer, that's 380000 a year in IT services, well, you got three customers? Or do you got 300? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you know, the folks at ConnectWise, and I, I've kind of given up on ConnectWise a long time ago. I think ConnectWise has come into this industry. They've been around for a long damn time, and I believe they just tell you all what you want to hear, and I don't see them really moving the needle. And you could argue with me all you want, but these are your numbers that you gave the Kanata Report. So unless you all lied to the Kanata Report, on the survey, these numbers are your numbers. And so after all this time, you did exactly what I said you all would do. You built lifestyle IT services companies inside your businesses. I think it's time to look for somebody else to help you. I think it's time to open your mind up. I think it's time maybe you call my friend Frank Kuko and say, hey, Frank, how much are you going to charge me and your team can teach us how to build the right IT company? And he's going to charge you a boatload of money. I mean, hell, if I was Frank, I'd charge you a hundred grand minimum. And the reality is, none of you will pay it. Because you'd rather go to a meeting that's maybe sponsored by ConnectWise and just listen to the same crap you've been listening to for the last, what, 10, 15 years. Ladies and gentlemen, numbers don't lie. It's amazing what the numbers are telling us. They also said that the IT business grew 29% year over year. That's even more horrifying. So it was worse last year. And is that 29% growth? What is that? 
Is that cloud services? A lot of people are putting stuff in the cloud. Are you selling a lot of licenses, but you're not getting a lot of revenue from that or hardware from that? You're just getting a lot of revenue? What's the profit? Ladies and gentlemen, you know, the Kanata Report, they'll do that Frankie Award. They always include an IT thing. It says, this is the nominee for this year's awards. Best IT and security service provider, ConnectWise, Kaseya, all covered a division of Konica Minolta. Okay, first of all, all covered a division of Konica Minolta. Give me a break. Are they really helping dealers with IT services? Because that's what they were going to do. They were going to be the back end for all the dealers to do IT services through. I really love to know the numbers on that. You see what I'm saying? Everybody talks about all this grandiose stuff, but they never share the real math or numbers. But, you know, ConnectWise wins all the time, right? You know, why do you think that these two don't win? They're not even, well, Kase is actually nominated. And probably because a lot of the dealers have left ConnectWise and went to Kaseya. They're starting to look at Kaseya. We got our friends over there at Halo. Or, and folks, I got to tell you, you know, Halo, they're, they're getting a lot of momentum. But you know what the difference between Halo, PSA, Connect, and Kaseya? You know what the difference between them and ConnectWise is? They're not going to chase our damn industry. Uh, they're not. They're, these, are, these are platforms where people go when they get really successful. They say, you know what? We need a change. We're going to go there. You're not going to see these folks running around chasing dealers in our industry. The dealers that get, sex, get successful in IT services will go find them. And so, ladies and gentlemen, here's what I suggest, and I suggest it strongly. Get that big old hammer out, smash that favorite pot, pull that tree out, and expand your environment. And the tree, by the way, is our industry. It needs a new environment. And everybody watching me knows this. Status quo is the killer. All it will be invented. Don't get stuck there, and I'll see you all tomorrow.